What is going on, citizens of the Accumulation Nation? Welcome back to Silver Forever, where we like to stack silver and stack like buttons. So go ahead and stack that like button, and let's get started. So today we are gonna be talking about all kinds of silver bar sizes, every silver bar size compared, basically everything that you need to know about silver bars. And we're gonna give you an idea of how to start stacking silver bars for yourself to grow your stack in silver bars. So the first order of business here is we are going to be doing a silver bar size breakdown. Then we're gonna be talking about what are the relative advantages and disadvantages of getting a silver bar in these various sizes. We're also going to be addressing what exactly constitutes a silver bar. Can a bar actually be a coin at the same time? Do we want to have our silver bars in sealed plastic, maybe capsules, shrink wrap, maybe nothing at all? How are different silver bars made? Some bars can be poured, extruded, machined, pressed. We're gonna talk about what's the difference between those. Does it matter if your silver bar has serial numbers? All of these questions that you might have about silver bars will be answered today on Silver Forever. Ooh, I think I pressed in a little bit too hard. Either this silver is really soft or I just don't know my own strength. That poked a hole right in this damn thing. Obviously we have a bunch of different silver bar sizes here. Let's go ahead and start. We're gonna be going from smaller sizes to larger sizes. First of all, what makes a silver bar? Basically a silver bar is anything that is in a bar shape that is made of silver, right? Well, it's not quite that simple. Some people might differentiate all types of silver just based on whether it's a coin or not. So something like this, Canadian silver maple leaf, of course, is a coin. Why is it a coin? It's because it is minted by a sovereign government. It has a denominated value, in this case $5. But some people can make the argument that anything that is not a silver coin is actually closer to a silver bar. So that includes things like rounds. We're actually looking at a one gram round of silver. This is actually closer to a silver bar or could potentially even be considered a silver bar. The point that I'm trying to bring home, just because something is called a round, it's not always about the shape. The shape isn't necessarily what matters. Just because this is round doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a round, it could be a coin. And just because this is bar shaped doesn't necessarily mean it's not a coin. In fact, this Beskar bar is actually a coin, believe it or not. Just something to keep in mind. One of the most common sizes of silver bars that you will come across is the one ounce silver bar. Oftentimes these will be around the same price as a generic round in one ounce. Sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. It really depends. But one ounce generic bars you can typically pick up at a pretty decent price. So this one I recently picked up at an LCS who I'm assuming just picked them up in bulk from a larger wholesaler. You can see they come in plastic. And that's another consideration when you have silver bars. Do you want to leave them in the original packaging? In other cases in my stack, we actually have capsules like on this Britannia bar or actual shrink wrapped plastic like in the case of these Germania mint bars. My recommendation honestly would be to just leave it in the plastic. My bars that I don't have in plastic, I basically just put into a plastic bag anyways. While it might be nice to get your hands on some of these bars, I don't really think that it's necessary. Finger grease is for instance, might lead to some tarnishing or some damage on some of the more numismatic bars. So what is the smallest size silver bar that I have? Well, you might think that it's a one ounce silver bar, but you would be wrong. That is, if you believe that silver rounds are actually to be considered silver bars, because in this case, I think a round is actually closer to a bar than to a coin, and I have a one gram round right here in my hand. You can see how small this thing is. Here at Silver Forever, I'm not a huge fan of one ounce silver bars. If I'm going to be getting one ounce of silver, I'm typically gonna be doing it in the form of a coin, like in this case with the Austrian Philharmonics, or more commonly in my case, something like the British Silver Britannias or Canadian Silver Maple Leaf. Those are what I typically am going to be stacking for the one ounce format. And that's really just because they can go into tubes really easily. There is a such thing as tubes for bars. They're far less common 
They do have to be tailor-made to the individual type of bar. For me, I just typically am not stacking one ounce silver bars in bulk. So there are many different types of one ounce bars that you might come across, and you've probably heard of particular makers that are a little more common than others. One of those makers that actually carries a lot of weight in the silver stacking community is this one, Johnson Matthew. You'll find these bars in several different formats, but there are a few unique things. People just like Johnson Matthew first of all so there's a little bit more collectability for something like this at the same time I don't want to overstate it these aren't really numismatics or anything like that but in this case it does come with a serial number which is kind of interesting especially in the one ounce and it's always a good idea particularly with bars and things that aren't in recognizable formats like coins to only pick up things that have fine silver written on them you know it shows that it's silver it shows the relative purity in this case three nines five and it shows the weight of the bar itself, one troy ounce. If there's a single take home message from this, it's that you need to make sure that people are gonna recognize that the bar that you are working with is actually silver. And we're gonna talk more about that later, especially as it pertains to much larger bars like 100 ounces. So now that we've taken a look at a few of these one ounce silver bars, what other sizes can we actually work with? I picked up a new bar recently. This is a five ounce bar. You can see size wise, they don't appear to be that different. Of course, the thickness is where the real difference comes from. We see this one also has a serial number and is in the five ounce weight class. It came with its own COA document. So of course that is also another potential way of ensuring that what you have is really truly silver. Now you might be thinking the next one I moved to is a 10 ounce and you would be wrong because silver around the world isn't just weighed in troy ounces. In many cases, it's actually weighed in grams. And that is where this bar comes in. The 250 gram coin bar, the East India Company of London bar. This is from St. Helena, 10 British pounds denomination. Now, how many ounces is 250 grams? A quarter kilo. It's a little bit over eight troy ounces. But of course, you can imagine how that might cause problems especially if you're trying to sell this bar to somebody locally in a private sale or even to your local coin shop, you would have to bust out the calculator. You do kind of have to be a little more diligent about ensuring that people understand the actual silver weight in this bar. On first glance, you might think that a bar that looks like this weighs more than a bar that looks like this. Well, you would be wrong because this bar is actually 10 troy ounces. Now, I haven't really shown off my Engelhard collection yet on the channel, but I'm sure that most of you have heard of these bars before. Engelhard, like Johnson Matthey, elicits a lot of interest from collectors in the silver stacking community and therefore can be worth a lot more than its simple actual silver weight. This bar here was made differently than this bar here. This is a seventh series, this is an 11th series. You can see there are some differences. Obviously how they listed 999 here is different. They each have their own unique serial numbers. You can tell here that this was stamped in. And you know, it might even be more obvious here in this one. You can really see how this was stamped in. Gotta love these angle hearts. And on the back, you can see that these are the waffle back variety. Here is another waffle back and here is what it looks like when it is actually machined versus poured. So this is a machine finished 11th series bar versus a poured waffle back 7th series bar. Now they're both 10 ounces, they're both made by Engelhard, but I'm just pointing out that there are differences in the way that certain silver bars are made arguably one of the most desirable from a collecting perspective and certainly one that people are willing to pay higher premiums on are these poured bars. Pouring is just what it sounds like. Silver has a melting temperature of about 1,760 degrees Fahrenheit. The silver metal will be melted and it will be hand poured by a person into a mold. Now in this case, it leads to this unique waffle back appearance, but obviously pouring silver is going to be more costly because it involves more direct human effort and labor. Now more commonly in the 10 ounces, you're going to be finding things like this. This is a Silvertown bar and this one 
one is pressed. And pressing a bar essentially occurs in the same way that making a coin does. I don't want to oversimplify here, but certainly pressed bars are the cheapest among the different types of silver bars that are made. Back in the day before silver premiums were so high like they are this year, a bar like this could often go for simply spot. And that was the case with this one. I snagged a deal on it. And at this point, this was, geez, five or six years ago. But looking at these, you know, they look fairly similar in size, but the reality is this is a 10 troy ounce bar. This one here is a half kilo, a 500 gram silver bar, and that works out to about a little over 16 troy ounces. So we're getting a little bit heavier here. You gotta love these germanium mint bars. Check out my video catalog. You'll see I've done plenty of videos about these germanium mint bars before. These are actually interesting because they're not poured, they're not pressed, but they're what's called cast. Basically what's happening is that the silver is melted and it's cast into a mold. It's kind of injected into a mold rather than physically poured. Typically it's a lot more uniform, a lot less imperfections, and that could be a good or a bad thing. You know, I personally like how unique every poured bar is. Even though in this case on display I have two separate angle hard waffle back bars. They all have a unique waffle back appearance on the back and I just find that to be a really unique, endearing and interesting part of stacking silver. That adds a lot of character to the stack and it's definitely a reason why I like to have some poured silver. 500 grams, about 16 troy ounces. Does it get bigger folks? And of course the answer is yes, it does get bigger. Here we go. Busting it out again, the one kilo silver bar. So this one, again, is coming from the Germanium Mint. It's a little over 32 troy ounces. This year, the kilo bar seems to be one of the better options in terms of getting a low premium silver bar. I'm not sure that it's my favorite size bar. Now, obviously with a one kilogram silver bar, you're still one third of the size of something like a 100 ounce bar. If you just wanna make a small sale, just get a little bit of feed back from selling some of your silver. Once you start getting up into the one kilogram range, it can be pretty difficult. Larger bars also, people tend to not trust them as much because it's very easy to have a non-silver center that then you just wrap in silver. And if you don't have the proper machine or testing equipment, it can be really difficult to validate that what you're working with is indeed pure silver, especially because bars don't have uniform sizes and oftentimes don't have security features like coins do. Now, of course, there's one bar I still haven't showed you yet, and it's actually the only bar I have in a capsule here, this beautiful 10 ounce Britannia bar. I wanted to show it on the channel a lot more, but I gotta be honest, the reason that I don't is the thing is so damn reflective that it just causes problems. This is a 10 ounce silver bar coming out of the Royal Mint in the United Kingdom, three nines fine silver, and I've just always loved this design. I always wanted to get one. They even make these in the 100 ounce. If you wanna see one of those, go check out Florida Stacker's channel where he likes to show that thing off. It's not all silver bar sizes. I don't have the 100 ounces. I don't have the 1000 ounce Comex bars. And that's for a reason. You know, for me, if I'm putting that much money into silver, I'm gonna want smaller sizes. If I'm putting that much money into any precious metals, I'm probably just gonna go for gold at that point. You'll notice I don't have a ton of one ounce silver bars. I'm not against them. It's just if I'm gonna be getting one ounce silver, I'm just gonna get coins. I do love angle hards. It definitely satisfies some of my collection interest. If I can get more poured angle hards, I'm gonna be continuing to pick those up. While this coin bar in the 250 gram quarter kilo size is unique and I love the appearance, I'm not sure that it's the smartest option for stacking just because of the lack of recognition for this size and some of the complications that might come with it, particularly living in the United States. Simple generic 10 ounce silver bars. If I had to make a base recommendation, just starting from scratch, buying silver bars for beginners, I do think that the 10 ounce size is the tried and true, the most consistently recommended size of silver bar. So it's really hard to go wrong with these. 
these are gonna be among your lowest premium options for a typical silver pickup. You know, obviously the larger the bar size, the lower the premium as a percentage, but you have to remember that's not just at the buying stage, that's also at the selling stage. For many, many years, it's been difficult to actually even get spot price for very large denomination silver bars. They're not the most liquid thing. Now you might say, if you're not recommending one ounce and you think 10 ounce is a good idea, what about five ounce? I'm not opposed to five ounces. I think they're a little less common than something like a 10 ounce. For me, I'm just gonna stick with 10 ounce. If I was going to be stacking using metric units, I gotta recommend these germanium mint bars. Check out some of the videos that I've done on these things. Obviously, I'm not recommending these as financial advice. You know, you gotta make your own decisions about what type of silver that you wanna buy. But I just love the way that these things look and feel the way that they're packaged. They have these cool holograms. They have serial numbers. They just feel good in the hand. They come shrink wrapped in plastic for protection. I just think that these are really great choices. And I know some other folks out there like Silver Heist certainly agree with me. Let me know what you think about silver bars in my collection. Let me know what types of sizes are your favorite. Which of these silver bars was your favorite? Do you consider silver rounds to be bars? I'd love to hear back from you guys. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and until next time silver today silver tomorrow and silver forever out